You're listening to Release Your Resistance with Bex Beltran, episode 70. Welcome to Release Your Resistance. This is Bex. The only reason why any of us don't have what we want in life is because of our own resistance. Right now, I'm learning how to recognize and release my resistance, and this podcast tells you how you can release your resistance so that you can live the exact life that you want. Let's get started. This episode is a little departure from the usual format and topics on this podcast, but I thought it was interesting, so I thought I would share. I recently finished reading a historical novel about a very interesting character, a real person, who was represented in a fictionalized account, and I found it so captivating. It made me interested in this person and in the history of that time. Reading that book prompted a really engaging conversation with someone else, and basically I loved everything everything about the experience of reading the book and learning about this person and putting the time period into perspective. And it reminded me that this is not the first historical novel that has really captivated me like this. I have read a few of them recently and over the years and enjoyed them so much. Reading fictional accounts of real people and events is a great way for me to learn about history and immerse myself in experiencing what happened and who lived in the past. Today, I want to share four mini book reports with you as reading recommendations. Maybe these little book reports will inspire you to read these books, or maybe they'll send you on the hunt for other books and stories that are more your style, or maybe this just gives you something to listen to and think about today for the next 20 minutes and take no further action on. The books that I want to share with you have the common theme of strong women throughout history. But since these are all novels, maybe reading these books is more entertainment rather than education. And since this weekend is Mother's Day in the United States, I love that each of these books features one or more themes of motherhood to celebrate, too. The first book that I want to tell you about is called The Memoirs of Cleopatra by Margaret George. I read this book when I was in my 20s and way back before we had digital reading on devices and getting books digitally from the library. So I had and still have the physical copy of this book and it is so thick. It's a very big and very heavy book. I remember reading it during the summer and I don't know exactly what year that was, but I remember getting such a summertime vibe as I read the description of Cleopatra's teenage years in Egypt and the rest of her life, too. And as I read the very descriptive narrative of Egypt during Cleopatra's time, and then the story of how she came to power, how she came to be the ruler of Egypt, even though she was of Greek descent how she met Julius Caesar and ended up with him and had a child with him and then ended up going to Rome with him. And then what happened when he was betrayed and died and then a further romance in Cleopatra's life and further children and the fact that she was a military strategist and a government leader and also being the topic of gossip and drama was so captivating and interesting. The story, of course, is a fictionalized account of Cleopatra's life and relationships, but it described so many historical events and places, which I just found so fascinating. Who knew I was interested in Greek and Egyptian and Roman history? Who knew that I cared? But I did. I loved the book. I completely lost myself in the sights and sounds and scents that were described, and I really, really fell in love with Cleopatra through this book. 
I was completely mesmerized by the idea of her. And it just gave me a sense that she was a strong character with such intelligence and creativity and so many strong traits and talents. And she was so intelligent and so independent. So she was maybe a prototype in my life, in my vision, in my eyes for a strong single mother who was working to take care of herself and her family and her role, which turned out to be the leader of Egypt. So that's pretty amazing. And last summer in 2020, I decided I wanted to revisit that summertime vibe escape that I had experienced back in the 90s when I read her story for the first time. So I decided to reread the memoirs of Cleopatra during some downtime. And I loved the book again. I realized how much of the story and the details that I had forgotten over the 20-year time span between reading it the first time and the second time. But I didn't finish it. I couldn't find it in an electronic copy, and I ended up reading that big, heavy physical copy that I had, and it was too heavy. Not the subject matter, but literally physically, the book was too heavy for me to hold and read comfortably since now I am so used to reading digitally. Talk about first world problems, right? So I think I ended up going on to other things or finding other books last summer, but maybe I'll give it a try again this summer. I still haven't been able to find a digital copy, but maybe I'll work on my upper body strength and dive back in again and get reminded of all of those sights and sounds and smells that were described to me when I read it and fell in love with the story and the character 20 years ago. So that book is... Memoirs of Cleopatra by Margaret George. A few years ago, I was in a book club, and the book we decided to read was The Alice Network by Kate Quinn. I didn't know anything about this book, and I wouldn't have probably chosen it for myself based on the description, but I read it, and it was such an amazing book. In its description, it's called A Story of Courage and Redemption. It's the story of two characters who had a very strong connection to wartime events in Europe. One was involved in World War I, and the other character had a personal connection to World War II based on a family member. And the book travels backwards from after the end of World War II to during the World War I period. You get to know about the characters and what happened during both of those times in Europe, and During those two significant time frames, the main character was so daring. She was so intelligent. She was multilingual. She was brave. She put herself in harm's way. She impacted the outcome of the world, basically. And these weren't real life characters, but the novel was based on or inspired by real life people and real events. It was just fictionalized, which I love. I love being able to read the thoughts and the details and the little vignettes of what could have happened, even if it didn't really actually happen in real life. I love reading a story in the context of real history because that is a really interesting way for me to learn and to get invested in and develop a personal interest in the past so that I can remember it. So I loved that book. It was a spy novel. It was a book about strong women. It was a book about friendship. And there is an element of a single mother in this book as well. I really enjoyed reading it and then talking about it with the book club. And I have recommended it to so many people since then. And now I'm recommending it to you. So that's The Alice Network by Kate Quinn. The next book to tell you about is one that I read most recently. It's called The Only Woman in the Room, and it was written by Marie Benedict. This book was described as the story of a brilliant woman scientist. I don't know why we need to say woman scientist. Okay, so it's the story of a brilliant scientist who was only remembered for her beauty, which now, of course, with this book and other reminders and sources. It's not the case anymore. Reading this book was such a surprise for me. I didn't seek out another war-related book or a historical fiction novel, but something drew me to it. 
It's the fictionalized account of the actress Hedy Lamarr. I've probably heard her name. I wouldn't be able to identify her in a photo lineup of actresses from the 30s and 40s, though, but I just found her story so fascinating. It starts out with her as a teenager in Austria, where she was from, and in her early acting days, and it follows her through her involvement with a character who actually ended up being pretty involved with the Nazis. And then the story describes her escape from that environment and from that relationship and how she made her way to the United States and how she made her way into Hollywood and became a famous Hollywood actress. And that's not all she was. She was also an inventor and I would say a humanitarian and she was also a single mother. So this book was so interesting to give specific details about what was happening in the lead up to the Second World War in Europe with a firsthand account from this fictional character who was also actually a real life person. She narrated what it felt like to be a Jewish woman in a country that was starting to turn its back on its own Jewish citizens. And then what it was like for her to immigrate to the United States and to try to get her mother out of Austria and into safety as the Second World War was really gearing up. And as her homeland turned to distrust, hatred and abuse towards its own Jewish people. I loved the book. It was a pretty quick read and an easy read for me. I highly recommend it for a little bit more modern day history in a fictionalized way. And after I read it, I read some of the reviews and found some criticism that the author took too much creative license with the story and misrepresented some major plot points. But as someone who knew nothing about Hedy Lamarr prior to reading this novel, I completely forgive the author for any stretching of the truth of events of the story because her fictional account got me interested in the real life person who really lived and I learned about real events in history that I would have had no knowledge of otherwise. So now we've gone from Egyptian and Roman times to the European continent with the First and Second World Wars. Let's move up to the Cold War. The book, The Secrets We Kept by Lara Prescott, or maybe Lara Prescott, takes place in the United States and in the Soviet Union during the Cold War in the 1950s. It's two stories in one, which I really, really love. The juxtaposition of the different characters and different places in the world kept me engaged. This was the story of two very interesting women, Two stories told and threaded throughout the same novel. One woman was the mistress of Boris Pasternak, the author of the book Dr. Zhivago, and the other woman was a young typist for the CIA. And I remember hearing about the book and movie Dr. Zhivago as a child, and later as a teenager I finally watched that movie, and it was a movie that my parents talked about and they were interested in it. So when I finally did watch it, I remember thinking it was very long and very sad, but also in a way kind of a romantic movie. So this book told the story of the mistress of that author of the book that eventually became that famous movie. And in learning about the mistress, we also saw what was happening in the Soviet Union at the time of the writing of Dr. Zhivago, and how the author and his mistress and the family basically feared for their lives and their freedom. We learned about a prison camp and what happened to people who didn't agree with the government in those times. And then the other side of the story takes place in the United States. And we meet a young woman whose family immigrated from Russia and she ended up getting a job in the secretarial pool for the CIA. And not only is she a secretary where you get to see her relationship and her conversations with other co-workers who are basically the behind the scenes eyes and ears on the administrative side of the intelligence world in the U.S. in the 1950s, but she also gets some special assignments. So it's very interesting to think of and see what she does. Plus, there's another character who has even more special assignments. Basically, it's another spy book. And all of these very interesting, strong women 
are all, yes, fictional, but also in some cases based on real characters and based on who would have existed during that time. So all of these books that I've just mentioned right now were completely enjoyable. They provided a great escape for me with plenty of real life events mentioned and referenced in those stories. So reading them was also a great way for me to learn about history. And I didn't mean to collect a list of books about different battles and wars and government types, but I did think it was interesting as I was recalling all of these books that many of them talked about a country that was being invaded or taken over by different types of governmental systems. The Romans basically took over Egypt and, of course, many other countries. That's where we get the term Roman Empire. And then the reasons leading up to World War I and World War II were countries trying to invade and take over other countries. And then The idea of the Soviet Union touched on how it was taking over its own citizens and imprisoning its citizens and not allowing freedom of expression and freedom of speech even for its most celebrated and revered writers. So reading about these women in a fictional setting was all very educational, and I recommend all four of these books. Of course, the topic of resistance came up in each of the stories, but often from the battle-related meaning of the word resisting, like resisting an invasion or resisting a government regime or the resistance during a war. So maybe that's one of the reasons I decided to group all of these books together in mini book reports for you today, since the topic of resistance is so interesting to me. Have you heard of any of these stories or characters or events? Have you read any of these books? Do you have any resistance to reading historical fiction? I will mention I was surprised to read so many disappointed critical reviews by readers who did not appreciate the fictionalized aspects of these stories and events and women. So if 100% historical accuracy is important to you, these books may create some resistance for you in reading them. Maybe today's episode gives you some book ideas if you're a mom and deciding to take a relaxing reading day in celebration this Sunday if you're listening to this in real time or any Sunday, why not? Or maybe you could start a two-person book club with your mom or with your daughter if you have either of those or both. Or if you're child-free like me, find another child-free friend to share one of these books with. I'll be curious to hear what you decide to do with these recommendations. And before we go today, I have a question. Do you track your reading? I don't do this, but I have heard of some people who make goals to read a certain number of books per year, and then they track and sometimes even rate the books that they read. So is this you? Or can you imagine yourself doing that? And if so, would you want a book tracking notebook? I'm thinking of creating one to add to my journal and notebook shop, which has a wide variety of notebooks, journals, workbooks, and all kinds of books, including some mom-themed books that would be perfect for your mom. So you can see them all at bexb.org slash quick shop. Let me know if you think a reading tracker notebook would be helpful to you and what you would want it to include. And also let me know if you liked this mini book report style of episode. You can email me at hi at bexby.org or leave a comment in the show notes at bexby.org slash strong women. S-T-R-O-N-G W-O-M-E-N. And that is where you can also get a link to each of the books that I mentioned in case you want to read them for yourself or in case you want to give one of these books to a strong woman you know as a gift. Thank you so much for listening today and I will talk with you next week. This has been Release Your Resistance. Thank you for listening. If you like this podcast, make sure you're subscribed and leave a review on Apple Podcasts. 
Also, think about someone who you know who would love this episode and share it with them. There should be a share button on your app if you're listening to this on your phone. If you'd like to continue this conversation one-on-one or in real time, come visit me on my site at beckspeed.org to see how we can work together. 